everyone, I'm Sophie from Bold Tech, an internal tools company and retool partner. And today I'm going to talk to you about the form component. Forms are one of the most common aspects of internal tools. They're typically how your end users will create or edit data. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to build a simple form, validate form inputs, insert data into a database, and add the ability to edit existing data. Today, we'll be creating a form to support a scenario we see quite often in internal apps creating and updating rows in a table, safely, securely, and with the right information. Let's start with this app here. So let's say you are this grocery delivery company, Reshop, who manages deliveries for many different stores in various areas around the world. So right now, this retool app allows me to manage a huge amount of data for each of these companies or brands in a centralized, intuitive UI. If I click into a specific record, I can see the details of that record in full view. The problem is this is read only and I'll actually need to edit this information. I want to swap this for a form that will let me update these records instead. So let's go over the basics of building a form. To begin, I'll click on the edit app button in the top right that will take me into the editing mode of retool. Let's start by deleting this container and then dragging a form component into its place from the inspector on the right hand side. This is our form component out of the box. We have an editable header at the top here, which has all of the same customization options as our core text component, as well as a pre-configured submit button here at the bottom, which like the title is its own fully customizable button component. You'll notice that the form is empty. If I only had two or three fields I wanted to add in here, I could simply drag those in from the inspector and be done with it. But since I have a table that has all of my data already in it, Retool can automatically generate the fields for you based off the schema of a SQL database. You'll see right away a few columns here, where Retool will pull the column names from the table and auto-generate labels, as well as designate an input type based on your given column type. For example, the email column type has defaulted to an email input, and the Boolean has defaulted to a checkbox. The form generator will let me customize a few things pretty quickly. For example, I can hide fields such as UUID, since this is being auto-generated in the back end. I can also change the labels and component types for a field. Maybe I'll change the parent column type to display as category, and maybe we'll change that to a select input. I'll also change the star rating column to display just as rating. And you can see that that's defaulted to a star rating column type. Let's change markup to be a percentage and these text areas to be inputs instead. Lastly, I can mark the columns as required or not required and rearrange the order if needed. When we click the Generate Form button, we're not only loading all of these inputs into our form container, but we're also going to tie it to this query here, one that will allow us to use this data to quickly manipulate our backend. We'll come back to this once we've organized our form. Now you can see all of the inputs we created within the form container, and you can see that those fields we have deemed as required are denoted with an asterisk. At this point, I may want to edit some of my individual components such as defining the drop-down values from the values in my database by heading to the map tab of the select component, selecting the get stores query and referencing the attributes in the value box. And here are the values in our select component. Another important part of any form is going to be validation to ensure that the end users submit data in a standardized way. You'll notice that one of the great things about many input components in Retool and being able to specify them in the form generator is that they come pre-configured with common validation rules based on their context. For example, this email input won't let me en enter anything other than an email address. I may also want to add in some custom validation rules, such as ensuring that the markup value does not exceed 15% when a grocery store is selected in the dropdown. I'm going to do this with a ternary that checks if the value of the category dropdown is grocery. And if the value in the number input is above 15%, it will present this error message and the form submit will be disabled. You can use curly brackets almost anywhere in Retool to mani manipulate components and their data with vanilla JavaScript. Let's test this quickly by setting the category and the markup value at 16%. As you see here, the error message has appeared and now the form is disabled. Lastly, I'll put the finishing touches on our header and footer. I'll change the title to update form instead. I 
And I'm also going to add a reset button to the footer so that the end user can clear the fields all at once should they have the need. We'll set this up using a simple event handler to control the component and clear the values on click. To improve UI and avoid misclicks, let's actually switch the button to a button link instead. And let's edit the styling down here. As we already saw, the form generator automatically created a query when we generated the form, in this case called form one submit to stores. If I look at that query, I'll see that it goes right to that stores table. And the default action type here is insert a record. So for the time being, the default action here is creating a new store in our table. So let's take a look at how this would work if we were looking to insert new records into our database. Down here, you'll see the object form1.data. What that means is Retool is packaging up all of the data for us. It's putting the keys that are required for me to insert that record into the database, and it's mapping back to the appropriate components. With any insert or update record query, we'll want this record to be displayed or updated in the table component automatically. So when I run this query, I'll also want it to trigger my get stores that populates my table. At this point, you can fill out your form, press the submit button and add a new record into the database. Let's add in a store called brand new store and add in some data here. So when I click submit, you'll see that brand new store is now visible in the table. Now that concludes creating new records or data sets. But remember, we actually want to update existing records. First, there's a handy feature within Retool that helps us to quickly pre-populate a form with the data from the connected table. If I click onto form one and head over to the inspector, I can initialize my form with data. In this case, I want to pick from our connected table, client table. From here, we'll update the automatically generated form query from insert to update. Let's change it here in the action type to update an existing record. We'll also need to filter by a unique identifier, in this case, UUID, by writing client table dot selected row dot data dot dot UUID. This means that when I select a row in the table and change the data, the query will write the updated values back to my database based off its UUID. You'll see that when I click into different rows of our table, our form changes to the data of that selected row. Now let's have a look at our finished app in practice. Let's say I want to change the store category, markup and the rating. When I click submit, we'll see that because of the logic we wrote earlier to trigger the get stores data upon success, the new change has populated in the table automatically. And because we already initialized the data, it's done so without having to also reinsert all of the other form values. And that's it. You've now got a fully working form for updating rows in your database. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope that that was helpful in getting your forms up and running in Retool. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below and head to the link in the description to get started with Retool for free today.